Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Kappa 2020 Zoom Artist Conversations. This is a second in a series of seven where you'll get to hear from our artists. They'll tell you where they're from, they'll tell you what they're doing right now, what their plans are for the future, why they love Cape Ann, and how excited they are to come back to Kappa 2020 slash 21. Uh, my name is Susan Coviello, and I'm the executive director for Kappa, and we are um, privately funded by lots of wonderful donations and led by a board of terrific uh, board of directors. So we're really pleased to be one of the premier plein air events in the country. And we're so happy today to welcome Ann Larson, Paul George, Russell Jewell, Jonathan McPhillips, and Gregory Summers. So why don't we just go ahead around the, the square a little bit. Jonathan, you're my top left. So why don't you introduce yourself? Hey, well, I'm uh, Jonathan McPhillips, and uh, I'm in my studio right now in Saunderstown, Rhode Island, uh, which is, uh, I've been a Rhode Island resident for just about most of my life. Um, and uh, my painting sort of reflects the remaining the coast, I think. I, my subject matter is pretty much coastal, uh, maritime, marine art, that, that type of thing. So uh, I do a lot of different subjects at times, but um, that's probably the lion's share of what I do. So Cape Ann, you know, I'm not that far from there. Um, and we have been there long before the you know, primary events were, were happening. So I uh, visited, but not, not as much as I probably should have. So um, I'm happy to have a reason to get back there for sort of an intense period of time of the week to, to paint uh, that historic area. Because it's, you know, I can find fishing boats five minutes from my home, but it's different, really different everywhere, whether it's Maine or Cape Cod or Cape Ann or Connecticut. It, it's a little bit of different flavor in each place. So um, I look forward to that, doing that again. Great. Thank you, Jonathan. Good morning, Ann. Tell us about yourself. Good morning. Um, I live in upstate New York in the Adirondacks, uh, just north of Albany. And uh, I paint here, but I tend to paint a lot in Vermont, and I come over to Cape Ann whenever I get an opportunity, because I'm only about five hours away, and I'll actually be over there next week. Um, COVID, the only, well, I shouldn't say the only, but uh, with COVID, it's, it's cut down a tremendous amount on travel. My husband's a photographer, and we travel a good part of the year, and of course, we haven't been able to do that. I mean, we go from California to Maine, and that's kind of cut that out. But other than that, it, where we live, it doesn't feel much different than, you know, what normal would be. Um, it's the one thing I've liked about it has been it, because it has kept me home. I've really concentrated more on my painting. I've experimented more. Um, I feel like, like a lot of us do when we take two steps forward and one step back, um, that I've move my work ahead for that very reason, because I have been home working more. Um, I love painting in Cape Ann. I love painting in Maine. Um, the North Shore of Boston to me is just fantastic. And we generally come over there in January when nobody's around and the snow, and I just love painting over there in January. So um, if we don't spend the winter in Colorado, which is one of the things we're thinking about, um, I'll probably be over there in January and hopefully I'll see you, Susan. Definitely. I'm so sorry about next week. <laughs> yeah, that didn't okay. work out. <laughs> that's okay. I'll hook up with John. And we'll <laughs> yeah, John and Susan for sure. So I had, I had made plans to have dinner with Anne. I was so excited. It was great. I also had plans to go to Jackson Hole, Wyoming, and I got the dates all mixed up. So I'm actually leaving I, this week. I won't be here to, to meet Anne. So. I think Jackson Hole over me would be better. <laughs> And it's so fun. Uh, Allison Menke is there now. Allison is painting there with somebody else there in Jackson Hole now, painting Yellowstone. Yeah, there's always people. Like I said, I painted out there with the Rocky Mountain Plein Air painters for seven years, and it was just absolutely marvelous. And yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, that fell apart. But mm. anyway, I'll be over there next week, even if you're not. Great. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> okay. Good morning, Paul. You're a you're a local here to Cape Ann. Welcome. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you guys. Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been it's actually been fine. Uh, the COVID uh, thing. We we took a few months off from teaching, uh, but you know my wife Katie. She's also a painter and teacher. 
and uh, we're, we're teaching again. We have a beautiful big hall to teach in, and we keep the students down to seven students, and everybody wears masks, and we spread out, but it's, it's still a lot of fun. It's good to see people, you know, good to paint with people. But other than that, we're out, uh, you know, we're out painting plein air. Uh, I came up to uh, Cape Ann 26 years ago and never left. So I've painted uh, probably every spot in Cape Ann at least 20 times. And, uh, <laughs> but I love it. It's, it's a beautiful, beautiful place. And I mean, I always love to travel. It's wonderful to go. You know, it's funny, you go up to Maine, you paint the same thing, but it's in Maine, you know, you're painting boats in Maine. And, uh, maybe down in uh, Cape Judith there with uh, Jonathan. Uh, but it's, uh, Cape Ann is very special. Uh, probably my special uh, area is, is Bass Rocks. You know, I love, love the coast, love the, the coastline, the surf, especially uh, during a storm, uh, you know, when the, when the waves are pounding, it's beautiful. But, uh, you know, we have beautiful beaches. Uh, it's, it's just wonderful. It's a great place to live and a great place to, place the paint so yeah our life hasn't changed that much uh you know outside of uh, spending a lot more time together <laughs> and uh i'm sure katie loves that <laughs> <laughs> we'll ask katie separately yeah anyway uh we miss the we miss the plein air events you know we've we've been uh, judged into several and they've been canceled and and shows and you know it's, it's that's that part of it's uh, a little exasperating, but it's still it's still a great thing. I mean, we're painters, and that's what we do. We love to paint, so it's it's wonderful. So great. here we are, and thank you, Susan, for doing this. This is thank fun. you. Well, it, it, it's fun to see everybody. It's so fun to see everybody. Really, um, I have we have a new social media coordinator. Her name is Mem her name is Memory Lane. It's a beautiful name, and she's a beautiful human. So she and I are sharing the responsibility of doing these Zooms, and she did the first one a couple of days ago. You'll meet her in May. So I'm really happy that I get to do a few of these and see everybody, and I haven't met Greg yet, so it's so fun to, to meet Greg and to see all of your faces. Yeah, Greg's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you can stay back from 1,500 miles away. <laughs> where, where are you, Greg? I'm in, I'm in uh, Kansas City. Oh. Well, sort of. The suburbs. Yeah. They have some crazy women there, I guess. <laughs> I've got me one, <laughs> but I've had four. But this is this is the one I've settled on. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that's, that's another Russell. that's another story. <laughs> yeah. well, good to see you, Russell. I I, I met you down in uh, Frederick right. many years yeah. ago. Yeah, and, and Jonathan. Oh. Good to see you. Sad about uh, Mystic closing, huh? Yeah, um, yeah, it was uh, it's a shame. But it happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, Russell, why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself, and then we'll come back to to Greg. Uh, well, Russell Jewell, uh, I'm from Easley, South Carolina. That's upstate South Carolina. Uh, and I was in uh, Cape Ann Plain Air last year, enjoyed it, fell in love with the place. Uh, my son uh, is at MIT in Boston. And so that's kind of convenient, nice to be able to, to fly in and see him a couple of days, then drive out to the Cape. Uh, so really neat opportunity. Are you there, Russell? I think you might have frozen. I think he's pretending. <laughs> okay, uh, Russell, so I think you froze, so maybe you could disconnect and reconnect with us, um, and we will we'll move on to Greg, and then Russell, we hope you can join back in. Did you freeze him, Greg? No, I did not, I promise. Sure? <laughs> okay, Greg, why don't we hear from you, and then hopefully Russell will get come back in with us. Okay, my name is Greg. <laughs> Oh. Uh, <clears throat> with trouble. Sorry, okay. Uh, Greg oh. Summers. Uh, I'm in the uh, suburbs of Kansas City and uh, uh, Kansas side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Can you hear me okay? Yes, no. thank you. Yeah, but can you understand me? That's no. the difference. Uh. Um, I'm in the yeah. Kansas side of uh, Kent, the metropolitan area and I, uh, I was in Cape Ann, I think uh, about 20, 2016. 
and definitely it, it was it was the place to paint. I mean, I've I'd never painted. Being Kansas, we don't have like water and boats and stuff here. Uh, uh, we have we have RVs and and, <laughs> we, and we cows. Yeah, but uh, but I fell in love with it. It's just just amazing uh, up there, and uh, look forward to getting back there. Not this October. Uh, next May, uh, I think it's going to be a blast. But uh, I've, I've been working on a. What I've been doing, I've been painting, uh, taking uh, taking on my work from like uh, Peru and uh, France and Spain and and just uh, working on that stuff lately. Trying to trying to stay out of trouble. <laughs> and it's working, Paul. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's great. That's great. How have you all found? Um, if you haven't been traveling and you haven't done your normal circuit or you're not able to get out and paint as much, I've, I've seen that artists are redoing paintings and sort of taking paintings out of their archives and some of you are just slapping, getting rid of them all together and starting from scratch and others of you are honing your, your paintings, some of your older paintings. Are you finding that, that you're doing more of that now? Taking more naps. <laughs> well, naps are good. <laughs> naps are good. You're old. How, but how is that? How does that work exactly when you, you have a painting, you've had it for a few years and then you reimagine it because you have the time to sort of take it out and reimagine it. I know that Catherine Hillis is doing a lot of that. I've seen Catherine doing a lot of that and some others. So I'm just curious about what that process looks like. I've, I've been, uh, you know, taking some of the stuff that I, well, like uh, from the Peru trip, uh, taking some of the studies and, and uh, the, the pieces, the pieces there I did were all nine by twelves, so uh, I'm, uh, those don't work well in galleries. So I'm I'm just re redoing them completely in larger pieces. And uh, um, same with uh, uh, the um, France and Spain. But the uh, old older pieces I've been working on a lot of older pieces, just grabbing stuff in this extra time that I've given, and I'm loving this. This uh, COVID, COVID. Well, I'm not loving the COVID, but I am loving the I, I'm loving the time that it's given me to yeah. to stay at home because before, I mean, painting outdoors is just so darn addictive. I mean, I just, I mean, if if I have a choice of painting in studio or outdoors, doesn't matter the weather, I'll go outside, and uh, it's just something about it. But um, but this is this has made me stay here and and finish all these pieces that or work, get. Uh, something like that. Where was I going? Paul, help me out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. A a anyways, let's hear from uh, somebody else. Yeah. So we have Russell back. So why don't we start again with Russell? He looks frozen. Oh man, frozen. Oh, Russell, I think we lost you again. <laughs> Can you hear us? You have electricity out there, Russell. Oh boy. Is anybody Are you else? From the must be doing it from a college. Does, <laughs> does anybody else want to weigh in on, on redoing paintings and how that process works? And yeah, I, yeah, I don't, uh, I really haven't, I, I do. I mean, when I, when I decide to, uh, if I need paintings for a show or I need paintings for a gallery or something, I'll, I'll look at some of my old paintings and, you know, touch them up. Um, but it depends on the medium, you know, in watercolor, I just redo them, you know, it's uh, watercolors are so much faster and they look so much fresher, you know, uh, when you, when you redo them and it, you know, oils are different, you know, oils, you can maybe sand them down a little bit or something like that and start over and do, you know, if you don't like them, but uh, I don't, I don't do much with redoing paintings. Uh, I, I may do sections, you know, but I, I like to start fresh. I'd rather do, you know, I'd rather do plein air paintings outside and do, you know, smaller paintings uh, as as studies and then blow them up back in the studio, you know. Yeah. Oh, okay. So that's what I do. <laughs> well, I'm uh, about getting back into old paintings. I mean, I, I guess we all have some lying around, you know, that we thought were finished or new weren't finished and didn't know what to do with them. I, I'd say I, the one thing I've kind of learned to experience with that is if I have if I have some paintings that I sort of dismissed for a while um, or maybe there was a lot of struggle to finish it or get it right at that time, 
Um, the next time I look at them, whatever I've learned in between or have, have come around to realize in the paintings done in that gap of time, when I look at it again, I almost know immediately if it's worth a little bit of time to make it right or if it's a hopeless cause. So it's kind of funny when I get back to the revisiting, it's, I won't go back and just struggle with it for days or weeks or hours to try to, to try to fix it. I'll know right away if I can, if I can make it right, which is kind of cool. And I never, I, that took a long time to get to that point. So now revisiting the old ones, um, the thought process is a little quicker as to decide if it's got a shot or to just move on and try it again from, from fresh like George said. So, um, oh, I mean, Paul said, so that's, that's, that's kind of how I look at the older paintings of, you know, the ones that have been hanging around or studies, you know, that kind of thing. So. I've been going through and <laughs> cleaning out things. That's one thing COVID has done for me. But it's always interesting to go back and see paintings you did years ago and think, well, that wasn't too bad a painting when I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've taken some of those studies that I felt like had a few merits to them and maybe try to do a larger painting or incorporate some of what's in them into other paintings. But um, I've been painting a lot for entries for shows and galleries, and so I don't do too much of that. I, but I certainly have cleaned out a lot of magazines and a lot of paintings. <laughs> Because my studio isn't huge, so I feel like I'm drowning in here sometimes. <laughs> and I have my camera up high. You, it, you wouldn't want the floor is, is all of that. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> are, you guys, are you guys doing less painting outdoors? Has COVID stopped you from going out? Uh, probably yeah. more, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're doing more. You know, it's... it's uh, you know, you're, you're, you're away from people. It's, it's fun. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've not done much. I wish I was out more, but I've been out a little bit. Um, some of it has to do with some of the, sometimes, uh, some of the, uh, in the paintings I need to make now are sometimes bigger. So, uh, this, you know, the study time outdoors is really pointed into certain blocks of, of weeks, you know, when I can do it a lot. So, um, the summer hasn't, it's been more studio time this summer yeah. than the past. So, but, but that's just, that's okay. That's just what it is. I don't mind working in either, either place. Yeah. That. yeah, definitely doing a lot more studio time uh, as mm -hmm. well. But it really hasn't stopped us uh, as far as going out. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's quieter. You know, you don't have the interaction with, with people that you used to have, which is, which I think is nice sometimes, you know, it's, it's nice to. I mean, I, I think, I don't know if you guys feel the same way, but I feel like years, as years go by, I, I, I try to make my method um, seamless in the same, indoors or out. Like, that, like you know, my palette's similar, my brushes, everything's sort of, maybe the size is a little different, but um, my thought process, Strokes. I, I, I'm trying to make it an indistinguishable, pro indistinguishable process. That, yeah. you know, that's uh, maybe it's been a little bit of a goal of mine, but I don't like to have, unless it's just my way that's that, and this is the studio. I, I, I want about my painting to me as a whole. You when, you're, when you're in the studio, when you guys are in the studio, are you working from photos? Are you working from your, your studies? Or what do you do mostly? My, my nation, I think. Oh, I was, I was going to say that all my stuff is uh, done from a combination of uh, s the studies or the mm -hmm. original studies done on location and, and photos. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a uh, it's kind of a combination. There are some some things that I can't find photos for, and and uh, and I've tried to rework them from from memory and. And you know, just it, which is kind of nice, and you sometimes end up with a better painting when you when you when you're just looking at your painting and trying to make it as good as you can, Absolutely. as opposed to looking at the scene and uh, yeah. yeah, it 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 makes you stretch your knowledge. Absolutely. If there is any yeah. You know, when I when I uh, when I first started, 
I used to paint, uh, I used to go out and paint. I always painted every day outside. I never, you know, I didn't have much of a studio, but uh, I went out and every day painted. And I almost every day I would take, you know, a dozen or 24 photos of my, my scene. <laughs> and then I would go to, you know, a one hour photo place. This was before the digital camera, you know, I'd go to a photo place and get the photos developed. I go back to my studio and I'd tack up a half a dozen photos, you know, and paint from, from them. And then one day uh, I forgot my camera and I realized, you know, you know, I was like, wow, <laughs> it's like, you know, you don't have your blanket. And I said to myself, you know, what difference does it make? You know, nobody knows what this looks like. It doesn't matter whether my painting looks like that scene or not, you know? So it's, uh, it made me realize, it, you know, it, it just doesn't matter. What's important is the painting, you know, focusing on that painting, getting that painting right, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and it was interesting. I read, I, I read a lot about Sajan, as I'm sure most of you have. But Sajan's probably the favorite of everybody, but I remember uh, reading about Sajan and it, it really amazed me that a lot of his sitters, a lot of his models would not accept the painting. When he finished the painting, they wouldn't accept it. They didn't think it looked like him. It made me realize, you know, we, when we go into a museum, we look at a sergeant, you know, we say, oh my God, what a fabulous painting, you know, it's beautiful. But we don't know if that painting looks like the person or not, you know, so we really don't know that. But the painting, the quality of the painting, the workmanship is amazing. So, you know, that's what we appreciate. Welcome I back. I love that. I love that, Paul. That's really good. Yeah. That's a really good perspective. <laughs> okay, we've got Russell back. So, Russell. Hey, Russell. Hey, Paul. Third time's a charm. Right. The you know, working out there. <laughs> <laughs> Had to go to the phone, gave up on the computer. So how are things? How are things? How is life for you right now, Russell? How's I your think, painting going and how, how are you doing? Well, I taught at the secondary school level art, art for 36 years. And so uh, I retired just before COVID. Well, actually last June. And so uh, uh, it's quite uh, an interesting uh, time for me. Uh, now, my daughter has just gotten into teaching uh, and so we're, we're, we have those COVID concerns, but she has also brought into our lives a new two-year-old grandchild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so I'm painting upstairs uh, while my grandchild runs around with my wife. And, uh, <laughs> and so I, I get out every chance I can, but, but I'm still, I work in watercolor, by the way. Uh, I, I love the love the medium, love to fight with it, and uh, so it's uh, it's not always friendly, but I, I enjoy what I do. But but I'm also an outdoors person. I love fishing. I love uh, getting out, and and that combination is what's really neat for me. Uh, and then the plain air circuit, when it opened up, I joined it right off the bat uh, with Plain Air Easton. I was in the first seven or eight of them in a row, and that really kind of got me going with Plain Air. And that's how uh, that's how I fell in love with it. So, um, but yeah, but COVID has not changed me. It would have changed me a lot had I not retired. But now that I'm retired, it just opens up that opportunity to really explore my own medium uh, as much as possible. You know, Russell, when when uh, a couple of times I took my grandsons out painting with me, you know, just and you set up a little easel, give them a brush and some paper, you know, let them paint. And uh, it's amazing the stuff they do. You know, I remember, I remember one of my, my grandson's painting, took him out to Bass Rocks. And this was in July. It was really, really a nice day. And he painted a snowman. So <laughs> interesting. But the best, the, best part of, the best part about it was I, I saved those paintings and I framed them and gave them to my son for Christmas, you know, and it was like the best gift ever. He still has them in his office and now the kid's graduating college. <laughs> well, well that, just, that just proves your last conversation. Nobody knows that it wasn't snowing, except for you. <laughs> That's right. That's, right. That's exactly That's right. right. Good That's point. Right. So I live in Essex and I live right up the street from the Essex Shipbuilding Museum, yeah. which 
you know, if you think of a location in each one of the communities, that's pretty much it for Essex, right? The, and I have seen such incredible paintings come out of a hardworking museum, you know, with Harold next door. Harold, by the way, is building a new ship down there. Um, I don't know when it's going to be launched, but wouldn't it be cool if it was launched next May? Um, mm -hmm. So that's pretty exciting. So I live in a, in a place where there are artists, there are artists almost every day down at the end of my street. And that seems to be just an iconic spot. So when you think about Cape Ann, and Paul, you've mentioned Bass Rocks a couple of times, and, and that certainly is such a gorgeous place to paint. Where, what, what place do you think, what, what's your favorite place to paint or what's your favorite subject to paint in Cape Ann? Well, if you're talking to me, you're talking to everybody. My, everybody my, has a chance, everybody, everybody will have a chance, yeah. Yeah, as well, I, I like said, I love Bass Rocks, but I also love Lane's Cove and I love Rockport. You know, there's so many beautiful places in Rockport, the quarries, you know, along the shore. And Essex, I mean, Burnham's Boat Yacht is, is classic. That's mm -hmm. it. That, that is the place to be. Yeah. So, uh, and the marshes, I mean, the marshes are beautiful. You know, there's, there's just so much, you know, so I'll, I'll let others uh, speak, but. There is a lot of stuff. There's just too much stuff up there. Um, yeah, the marine, the marine uh, railway yard, rail yard. Uh, I really like that, and, and I could find parking as there. Uh, uh, what was it? I couldn't find any much parking up there. Is at Rockport? Rockport oh. is is a little bit more difficult to find parking. Yeah, 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 especially yeah. yeah. But we'll, um, we'll work we'll work on that for you for May. <laughs> okay, yeah. you know, I just got a scooter. What I need is a scooter to haul my stuff around. <laughs> yeah. All right. Russell, how about you? What's your favorite, uh, what's your favorite Cape Ann location to paint well, or your well, subject? I, well, you know, last year was my first year, so I was really scouting around trying to hit a little bit of everything. But, but Essex, like you say, is just unbelievable in terms of what you can see there. And of course, the quick draw was there. Uh, that was really neat. But I got in the barn at Harold's uh, and uh, just loved that. I, I, um, I was out there with Richard Sneary, and Richard uh, had met Harold, familiar with him, and so uh, he was kind of showing me around. But just to kind of get in some of those boat building barns and see the light that passes inside of them uh, is absolutely crazy. And, and then some of the perspective you can gain from having those boats inside the four squares uh, of the walls is really incredible. That is for sure. That's great. What's the what's the name, the crazy name of that beach that right before you get into Gloucester, the W, starts with a W? Winger Chic. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that one. <laughs> Winger Chic Beach, a little bit off yeah, the beaten right. path. Yeah, I was there in January and it was a beautiful day and I painted there and I didn't go during Kappa last year and I, I just couldn't get to everything. And of course, then we had the Nor'easter. <laughs> But uh, I painted there and did a what I thought was a pretty nice painting that's up in my gallery in Maine. It, hopefully they'll know what this is. Probably they do. So yeah, I'm go, I'm planning on going back there for sure. Jonathan, how about you? What's your uh, what's your go-to when you come, when you're here? Uh, well, I, I probably like the the um, the commercial piers of Gloucester. I think that's I, I like those a lot. Um, the, all, all the other places mentioned in Boston. Um, I, I really liked one they did last year with the at not uh, not going to see the, the uh, heritage the Gloucester uh, heritage um, shipbuilding the maritime the heritage merit yeah. the maritime heritage yep yeah. Yeah. yep yeah. So there um, and I think that's the boat that might be over at Essex now that was up on the it was up on the on right on the Stanton. could yes it could very well be yeah yep so yep. Uh, but my my only favorite things last year was actually turning away from the water it was a little one of uh was it mom's kitchen so, uh, it, was, it was of this the city yes. like the storefront in, instead of the the, the war I, I strayed off my own my own path <laughs> and, I, and i turned around and painted uh, that direction I, I don't think it's there anymore i think they moved since so um yeah that's a, that's a i like looking at the city streets mm -hmm. you know, as well which is different so yeah. um i think that's a, a new Thing for me to check out, you know, so that's cool. I like that part. Great. And Greg, how about you? Your 2016 memories? Uh, I, I was painting. Yeah, yeah. Uh, painting. <laughs> everything. 
Let's see. I, I just love that. Well, I was up at Lane's Cove and all the lighthouses and the quarry mm. up on the northeast end of the uh, Cape Ann. I kind of hung out with uh, Richard Sneary quite a bit. Oh, I was just painting with him a couple of weeks ago. Uh, but um, uh, just I, I could not find any place that I didn't like. Uh, and even the mall. I mean, I didn't go there to paint, but uh, I, I did get groceries there. And that was <laughs> you needed a place to find that stuff. But uh, yeah, I just um, being a uh, Kansas boy, I just uh, fell in love with the water and the and the boats and all the stuff we don't have here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. You know, we're planning when we plan for May, um, and everything is tentative. But we're hoping to do the quick draw at Maritime Gloucester, so that might be where the quick draw is in May. Um, <clears throat> we're we're trying to scout out some some different locations for some demos during the week. And so we're, we're in the planning stages, but the quick draw always works really well in Essex, um, just because there's so much stuff. You don't need to go far from the shipyard to be able to find some place to paint. But we are thinking about, the, um, about doing the quick draw in Gloucester next year, Good. which I think would be great. Uh, we were planning that for October. And then of course we had to you know, switch gears a little bit. Um, so what some happened? Of I'm sorry, go ahead. What happened? Why can't we do it in October? <laughs> well, you know what? Uh, we were all willing, but none of our housing hosts wanted anybody near oh, them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Especially you. The governor, the governor is keeping, that's right, Christopher, you, you're blackballed. Um, the governor is keeping a very close eye on, on Massachusetts. Some people think it's too close, but um, I appreciate his efforts. So, you know, so we're, that's why we wanted to do something to honor Cap Up October. But now shifting forward to May, we're really excited about some of the, we've been doing Cape Ed plein air. This is our fifth year. This will be the first one in the spring. It'll be a completely different, the marshes are, are gonna be light green. They're not gonna be orange and orange and ochre. They're gonna be, everything is much different. The leaves will be on the trees. Um, it'll probably be weathery, but hopefully toward the end of the weathery. month, it won't be bad. That's what, what we like to call it. Weathery? Well, for example, Greg, <laughs> last year, it was weathery for the whole week. Weathery. <laughs> so, I like the way you mentioned, say weathery. <laughs> <laughs> or ish, weather-ish if you prefer. Um, so I'm looking forward to May because I think everybody's art school, everybody's paintings might look a little bit different because you're not necessarily going to be see the, seeing autumn colors, but more of the early spring sort of feelings on Cape Ann. Um, but yeah, last year, the weather was pretty incredible. We had a, a week long nor'easter. It was the longest, slowest nor'easter we have ever seen. And everybody managed to paint outside every day. So I don't know how that went for everybody, but we created, you created some pretty remarkable art. And I wonder if that was the worst weather you guys ever painted in outside, or if there's another experience that you had that would rival, especially Wednesday and Thursday when it rained about two feet. I actually painted in Rockport in a nor'easter a few years ago in so Wow. <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of fun. <laughs> the weather down in uh, down down in uh, Maryland gets really hot, you know. The mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. boy that that can, be, you know, <laughs> that can be really really tough, you know. I uh I, I painted once in Easton's Quick Draw, and uh, it started pouring right in the middle of it. And I was actually under under a canopy, but I uh, ran down the street to a beauty shop, and I used their hair dryer uh, to to blow my <laughs> my watercolor dry. So uh, that came in handy. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody tied themselves to their car last year, Jonathan. I don't remember who that was, but somebody was outside and they lashed their, their <laughs> easel been, to the mirror of their car. Kirk. It must have been Kirk. <laughs> it, might, it might have been Kirk. It might have been Kirk. Kirk Larson, yeah. 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 Any memories like that, Jonathan? Or were you sort of undercover and pretty safe and secure the whole time? Yeah, I mean, I, I, as long as it's dry, as long as I can stay dry, and the cameras can, I just, it, it's okay. Okay, and I, I was lucky enough. I have a you know a hatchback thing, and I and I had a little um, you know I I rigged up. We all came up with ways to do things. I rigged up an umbrella that was, so that everything could I could touch next to my car, and and you know get through it. Uh, I hit you know so that like once you come up with that ahead of time, you're all set. You know, so I, that's how I look at it. But as long as I have like five you know maybe 
five feet around me or something to to make it work next to my car with something tied to the roof rack that, that like an umbrella. Um, it's fine, you know, it's okay. So I, I stop to forget about it. And I love painting in, in those kinds of conditions sometimes. The, 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 you know, not necessarily the wind, but like the rain and that, and that kind of thing. Um, I remember hiding behind a very large, uh, at, at Bass Rocks Ball, um, I think uh, Mitch, Mitch Baird and Jay Brooks were there. And uh, as someone else was on it. So anyway, we, we were, but we were in the lee of a rock. It ended up being the name of my painting. So it was a, it was a mass. <laughs> we got behind that and no wind. Yeah. We stepped out from it and the wind was howling. So, you know, sometimes. I know right where that rock is. Yeah. Yeah, you know, right? Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah it's great. Yeah. It's a place where you can turn out and, and walk down. So that, it, the way the wind, if the wind was coming the other direction, forget it. Couldn't be there. So you find, you find, you adapt, you find little nooks and crannies to, to, to paint in. So. It's all fun. I loved the weather last week, but um, I know it didn't provide a lot of sun and that kind of thing, but I, I, I thought it was fun, but that's just me. Those are always the best memories. You know, those are always the best memories when you, yeah. you painting in a storm or, you know, and you come up with some amazing paintings as well. It's, it's, it's yeah. a challenge, but it's, it pushes you and, and you don't even know it, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. absolutely, that's true. I mean, for a, from a planner's perspective, I was, pulling my hair out and just yeah. moaning all the whole time. But in reality, um, at the end of it, it all came out great. And there were no complaints and the artists were also terrific. And so yeah. it was a, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And this year will be too. No complaints. There were no complaints. <laughs> there were no, listen, Chris, we don't know each other yet really very well, but you're going to get to know me and you, there better not be any complaints. That's all <laughs> I'm going to say. I didn't think of it. No. Not a chance. <laughs> yeah, you don't get any lobster if you complain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so lobster, that's a, that's a big thing here. Um, the food, we will feed you and hopefully try to wine and dine you to the extent that you are interested in that. Um, we encourage you to paint a whole lot. We hope to have a nocturne evening. Obviously, ours was rained out. It was blowing a gale in Rockport that night on that Thursday night. But we're hoping that everybody will enjoy. Does everybody do nocturnes? Is that something that yes. is a general plein air sort of exercise for most artists? Are you all nocturne? I like, I I like doing nocturnes. Well, I don't, I don't know if I like doing nocturnes. Uh, <laughs> um, they, they turn out nice. It's just difficult to see. Uh, yeah, how, but, do, how, do you, how do you see what you're painting and see what's in front of you? I mean, maybe when I was 20, I could do that, but I can't seem to yeah. do that now. How do you yeah. do that, Greg? Oh, I ha well, I have a nice, a very nice uh, light uh, for, a, I, I have the rev light for for painting. Okay. And, but w which makes, <clears throat> excuse me, it allows you to turn it down, so that you can see past it. You don't want too much light illuminated that you, that it interferes with your scene. But yeah. it's it's a very nice light that that uh, that is well if if you don't like painting nocturnes uh, it's it's well uh, uh, and it's because of the light that you don't like doing another reason i don't like doing is because it messes up with the the time i love to sleep yeah <laughs> but you know you gotta you gotta you gotta give it for the for the team right yeah <laughs> but anyway that's that's it yeah next any yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, Anybody else want to weigh, weigh in on nocturnes? I enjoy doing it. You know, um, yeah. I don't, you know, I'm doing a lot it's, it's compared to other types of paintings. It's, um, but I like them. I've done, I've done them a lot more in the past. And I do a lot of studio nocturnes too. But it's all, to me, it's all learned experience. That you, you, like Paul mentioned earlier, you're pulling in different experiences into every painting. The nocturne in front of you, you know, sometimes the, the light might not be right, or the street light you're under might not be good enough. But most people we'll make it work somehow, you know, pull it off, I think, and try to try to come up with something we knew from another painting and, and bring that to it, uh, bring that to bear on what's in front of us. So that's that's the challenge of the nocturnes, I think, is sometimes if you paint them, you know, with some of the starkness and contrast is there, you're, 
you might not have an interesting painting, right? So sometimes you pull in more light that um, you got bringing from another place. You know, from your own experience with painting. So, um, so Paul mentioned you mentioned something earlier, Paul, about shifting things around, and it's always a big debate of what, what, how much leeway do we have in, in representation. It's interesting at the plein air events that. You know, we are in a we are in a we are in a, a place where where the the people who are coming to see our artwork they know the place well. So we have to walk this fine line of like landmark paintings versus, you know, like Bass Rocks can can be rocks along the coast in many different places in New England, right? So, yeah, a boulder can be moved. I mean, geologically, boulders move. So yes, we can do that kind of thing. Um, but when you when you're doing let's say like um, Cape Cod ice, you kind of have to get the building right. You know, like you, there's an obligation there where you can't mess around with it too much. So it's interesting when that we have to kind of walk that line as artists, especially when we're in the locate in the plein air locations, because uh, you know um, the the people who are coming out to to see the work, they're watching. You know, they keep they're, they're scrutinizing, like, oh no, well that's not what that looks like. And that, you know, so it's interesting when we're trying to make a nice painting in depict or document our surroundings. Um, you know, a stream or a brook could be anywhere in the woods, you know, but then, you know, the, 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 the landmarks around Gloucester are unmistakable, you know, and if they're off, it can be challenging in a kind of event, I think. Yeah, I, I'm not a big, uh, you know, I mean, if you're doing a commission or you're doing something where you really need realism and you really need to paint what's in front of you, uh, that's one thing. But, I, you know, the most important thing is the painting itself, the composition. And that was basically my point that uh, I think, you know, we're all we're all trained to, you know, in drawing and, you know, and all the basics of painting. So we, we can reproduce anything, but I, I don't think that's the key to, to good paintings. I think good compositions uh, uh, more important than than reproducing what's in front of you. I, I completely agree. I'm posing yeah. the question: Is it important to, to events? Yeah. <laughs> to the event. You know, that's a different question. You know, uh, it's to depicting the the area. You know, that's the. I, I know what we're up to. We're making the best paintings we can. We can do that with everything at our disposal. I, I guess it's all in the eye of of the artist. You know. Uh, you know, I mean, we, you know, we, we all see it differently. So we, we could paint the same scene and each one of us would come up with a different painting. So it's, you know, there's no, there's no real uh, true. My point, is, my point is, is like, I can't flip around the, the, the structural elements of motif number one. And, you know, if I'm trying to depict motif number one, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I can, I can reshape the tree and the rock with the waves, you know, but that, when we're doing the buildings and structures of of of, a, of an area, I, I I just find that I find that a good challenge. Yeah, it's all in the it's all in the presentation. You know, they used to have a a wet a wet paint day in Rockport. You know, and uh, the the whole day was painting. Everybody painted the motif. Everybody. So you had at the end of the day, you would have a hundred paintings of the motif. And so many would be different, you know. But one one that I remember that I loved was uh, I forget the man's name, but he he painted it from the bottom of the sea, you know, looking up, looking up through the ocean and breaking the water. And above the water, you could see the the motif. It was really wonderful. So it's it's you know, like I say, it's all what you see, you know. But I, I certainly get your point there, Jonathan. Yeah, you have to. Yeah, Kind of depends on whether you're going for, you know, uh, uh, like um, Paul said, the just the painting, whether the painting's a a a good painting that stands on its own, or whether you're going for the uh, Spirit of Gloucester uh, award yeah. or something, you know, whether you know, as what's your goal in, in painting? Are you trying to capture that, you know, and that time period of time? Are you trying to just, you know, make something? cool that's why, that's why we have a week we can do all kinds of stuff right <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah really because the first time it doesn't work try again right but that's that's the cool thing about uh scouting out ahead of time uh and, and checking what the light's doing 
Uh, what Jonathan was talking about, you know, is true that people are going to uh, watch you and judge you about what they know about the, the scenery, but a lot of times scenery comes up and, and if the sun is shining, you know, different or, or if it's early morning or whatever, you get something that they've never seen before. Uh, I had the opportunity of painting one time uh, and I had gotten there early the, the day before and seen what the sun was doing in, in terms of a, a white house. There was a white house that at a certain hour, uh, the sun just lit it up. And so uh, I had a, a person standing beside me watching me paint and he said, I don't see anything very interesting. And, and I said, well, we'll just give it about 10 more minutes. And in about 10 minutes, that light, that, that house started lighting up like a candle, you know, and he just, he just stood there amazed about uh, how things changed in just a few minutes. So, so sometimes it's not about the scene as much as it's about the timing of the scene. Yeah, exactly. It's a, it's a really great question, Jonathan, because I always wonder, not, I'm, a not, I'm not an artist. Um, I'm not even artist-ish. Um, but I do wonder when people paint, do you paint how, what percentage is just for pleasure and for the, your talent coming out and how much is it for business and do those two things intersect and can you, are you happy with the intersection? You, you get a commission, so you have to paint a picture of something that you may not care about, but you create it because technically you're tremendous artists and you can do that. And then sometimes you just go out and you see the light coming up on a house and you wait 10 minutes and the light's incredible and you paint it and that more comes from your heart. So what's that like? How do you, how do you, how do you balance? Well, I don't like, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do dogs playing poker, you know, for commissions. Like, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I personally as an artist suffer from like subject overload. I'll paint a beach, and then I'll move to marshes in the next week, and then I'll, I'll paint street, you know, street scenes and the boats. So I've I've always been struggling about not having that subject, straight line, focus. Like, oh, he always paints a boat sitting at a, at a morning, and he's painted thousands of them. Well, I've, I've painted a bunch of them, but then I, I so my the challenge of painting is enough for me. So the the subject matter is only stuff I like. If it's you know the like coastline or or even city scenes or, or building structures, um, and sometimes organic scenes or, or more natural scenes like streams or brooks or waterfalls, it, like I just said, I, I'm all over the map. So I'll take in anything as a challenge. Um, I don't mind that 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 I'll give it a shot to try to render it or depict it. So I, and that's why planner events like Ross are so great. You can go paint with pulses at that fast rocks. So there's the coast and waves. Or you can go paint, you know, behind Cape Cod ice, and it's a it's an alleyway, you know, with old fish buckets and stuff. So, I I don't mind being scattered. It's probably a little bit my detriment, but it, it works for me. So I, I I enjoy that variety. So I don't mind where it comes from, whether it's me or someone else or a suggestion. Uh, and the planner events give us all these places to try, and I I kind of admire the artists who who just say I'm going to do the city the city streets the whole time. I, I like. I think that's wonderful. I wake up every morning with a scatterbrain <laughs> of where I'm going to go paint. So, so I'm a little different. And I don't know. I, I don't know if anybody else notices that in their own work that um, they move around a bit in subjects. And the planner events kind of help that in some ways with the different locations. You know, um, or you can choose to just paint the boats the whole time. You know, so. You know, there's, there's something good about that too because you get really focused and you really drill down into, into walking into a subject matter. So uh, I, I try to do that in blocks now, at least to try to stay with something for a little while to get better at it. And that's a challenge, really. So, okay. What a fun part. That question, that that question Susan, is, a, is a, a never ending question with artists. You know, I mean, we're all. We all love to create. We all love to do what we want to do, but you know, you still have to pay the bills. So when you get a, you know, when you get a commission, or even if you don't have a commission, if you need paintings for galleries, or you know, the question of should I paint what sells or should I paint what I want to paint is a is a never-ending question. You know, so it's it's a 
you know, it just, there's no, it just depends on how much money you need, I guess, <laughs> you know. Paul? Paul, I thought you married into money. I yeah. did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yes, could, it sounds I, like you married into money more than once. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the other ones took the money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I, I'm I'm with Paul on on. I mean, uh, Jonathan on that, in, in the fact that you know I'm I'm all over the board as far as what I end up painting. You know, it's it's I paint everything, whatever I see. If and you know whether it's a commission, if I have to do a commission. You know, I'll, it's it's the process exact uh, of painting that you know I, I can enjoy. I can enjoy anywhere. I I mean, if I I've I found out I can enjoy sitting in timeout. I mean, I can I can enjoy any situation. You know, I enjoy the military. I enjoy the school. You know, I enjoy painting. It does. I enjoy painting in my basement. Yeah, that's it's it's a you know it's and it's all over the board whether it's commission or for fun. I think it's good to enjoy nothing too. I, I, think, that, that's, that's, yes. cool. I think that's beneficial to break a bit and not. I, I cannot work eight hours a day in the studio, uh, but by by hour number four or five, I'm going to be producing junk. I've experienced it too much to know. I know I I, I need to have a certain amount of, of you know time that can be put in. It's good time, you know, like really productive. Uh, if I push and push and push too much, it, I'm not learning any more skills or chop with my hands and, and, not, it, and my eyes. It's, 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 if I can think more about painting of what I want to do, the more time thinking about it or planning it, the better things tend to be. So that, and that's mm -hmm. tough in their events because you're sort of under the gun to get you know, a certain number of things done. So there's not a time to plan. Plan of painting is not about, it's not, it's not planned there, painting. You don't have a lot of, sometimes you gotta get out of the car and paint. Um, or a studio work, I get to dwell on it, I get to mull it over. Whereas I used to go right to the canvas and screw it up 17 times. Now I try to make sure I go in getting it right, you know, and uh, like, a, like a Russell, like a watercolorist, so you, you gotta, you gotta, you got some, you got some things to decide ahead of time, <laughs> you know, to make, to make it right, you know. Right. That's very admirable for the color, that's for sure. <laughs> and I've, I've heard that it, I've heard that advice given to uh, first time plein air painters when they're when they're just uh, maybe it's their first time in a competition is to is to paint what you know uh, when you get out there because uh, it, it's not a time to experiment necessarily during a competition. Yeah. Uh, but, but it is kind of neat because you, you get attracted to a lot of things, a lot of challenges that you, uh, uh, you might not would think would be interested in until you think, wow, that's a, that's a neat spot. I'm going to try it. And uh, there you go. <laughs> You're in trouble in a hurry. <laughs> this has been such a great conversation. Um, I've kept you for an hour. Um, I'm so great. Sorry about that, Chris. <laughs> um, I'm so grateful to all of you. I know our audience is just going to love this conversation. Um, this will, all of the conversations are going to start going up on our, on uh, social media and on our website in October as we, as we start our virtual October week. So I want to thank all of you for joining in and, um, we want to thank you, Susan. Thank you. Thanks for putting thank this together. You. Thank you. Thank you well, for putting this together. Yeah. And we look forward to some good dinners. <laughs> it's yeah. going to be so much fun. Yeah. Yeah.